era una de las películas más esperadas del año. Pude hablar con el doble de riesgo histórico de Wolverine que me contó cómo fue hacer Deadpool y Wolverine precisamente entre un millón de acuerdos de confidencialidad para no develar absolutamente nada. Desde las tomas que más le gustó hacer hasta las más complicadas y una que incluyó casi un ataque de pánico para Hugh Jackman. Fíjate todo lo que me cuenta el doble de riesgo de Wolverine. We now return to Mira Akien and Contre with our latest interview. I don't remember the first specific stunt, but I worked on the first Iron Man film. I actually doubled Iron Man. Uh, right at the end, there was some other guys doing it, and then one of the doubles had to leave, and then I came in for a fitting. And at that stage, it was really about who could fit the suit because um, <clears throat> I had a practical suit. And the, the tricky thing was being tall, but then having a small enough to head to fit the helmet because they don't want the helmet looking like a motorcycle helmet. It actually needed to look cool. So for me going into that fitting, and I knew it was all about the helmet, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like the Cinderella moment of, Wolverine I mean, it was amazing. Everybody was excited on set because, I mean, it, it's been so long coming. But, yeah, in terms of, I mean, my first time doubling Wolverine, yeah, 17 years ago on X-Men Origins Wolverine. So, technically, it's Marvel, but it was really a Fox film. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely a long time coming. This is my fifth time doubling Wolverine, and they never had an excuse to justify the suit before because it's, I mean, it's definitely a different look in trying to fit into a, Kind of like basing it in reality, it's hard to to tie it in there. But then, yeah, when this one came along, I mean, there was rumors before we even started the film that there was going to be the suit. And I originally got cyber scanned in Los Angeles because that's where I live. So then they scanned me at a place here, but then they were sending all my sizes to somewhere in the UK to build the suit, but they wouldn't tell me what it was. And I was so I was asking the LA people, I'm like, is there a co like an actual comic book costume? And they were kind of subtly hinting that maybe that's what's happening but even they weren't completely told they were just told to measure up the people and um then yeah it was super secretive and then so when i was in london we started rehearsals for a while and then eventually i went to do my first fitting and i saw the yellow suit hanging on the clothes hangers and like oh my god that is amazing uh so then yeah started trying that on and then eventually they put on the cowl as well because obviously that's a late reveal in the movie but at the time yeah getting to try that thing on was just so exciting the, i mean yeah there's so much history in terms of the comic book world and the fans wanting it and then the movie world and the movie fans wanting to see it and yeah it's a very special moment you got the wrong guy knowing about all these cameos that were coming up and all the variants it was it was very hard keeping those secrets it was yeah How many NDAs did you sign to, not to oh. tell anything? <laughs> Just the usual massive Marvel, Disney, NDA. Yeah, it's definitely, they are very serious about it. Even at the start of the film, the Marvel security had a meeting with the entire stunt team and told none of us to add our names onto IMDb before the game. <laughs> yeah, out. that's an issue. Yeah. Because nowadays, yeah, there are actually fans of stunt people, which to me is bizarre. But there's people that follow stunt people's careers. And if they see a stunt person's name on IMDb though they know which actors we've doubled before and then they'll start assuming that those actors are in the movie so wow. yeah they don't want those kind of spoilers <laughs> he's been doing it a while but I mean he's still in incredible shape and he can still do it all like all the fight stuff he's still doing most of it himself like he's in incredible shape the shots at the end with him shirtless people keep asking me if that's me I'm like absolutely not that's completely 100 Hugh Jackman He works his butt off for this stuff. So, yeah, he can still do it all. Um, but in terms of the mask and allowing more doubling, it's actually funny. These days, you can get away with using stunt doubles for anything. Like the CG face replacement is such an easy yeah. thing to do. I mean, people can do it on Instagram, on their home computers. Like it's these days, they will film me face on. I'm like, how are you going to use this? But it's such an easy thing to face replace nowadays. They hang out in pretty decent shape, but definitely not that superhero mode so for me when i found out about the film it was six months before we started shooting and so yeah he was like 
time to get in shape again. I'm like, okay, here we go. And each time I've done it, it's pretty easy to get back to the size where I was before. And then you just got to push it further each time. Um, but your body kind of has this literally what's called muscle memory and you can get back to that size pretty quick. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah, the discipline of pushing through it all. Um, and I mean, for me, the hardest part is that I'm doing it on my own. Um, yeah. And I've got, I mean, I've got the experience of doing it. My wife's actually a personal trainer, so she helps me a lot. But then when Hugh's on set, he has a full-time personal trainer with him and then a personal chef as well, literally just handing him the perfect food to eat all day. So for me, that's the hardest part is getting my diet sorted and getting the right calories at the right time throughout the day, especially when yeah. we're on set and we're filming. And you got to work, say, a 10 or 12-hour day on set, and then you've got to make another two hours in the day to go to the gym every day. You don't have a choice. So. <laughs> The first one is the one where you're fighting each other in the voice and Wolverine is start, start running like he's almost an animal. How was shooting that? Uh, that was an interesting one because we actually start, we started the whole film in the summer and uh, but then we went on strike. The Screen Actors Guild went on strike for four months um, and then we came back in the winter. So when we started that sequence, it was in a quarry in England in the middle of summer, swelteringly hot, like that bright white clay just bouncing all the sun and the heat back at you um, and it was incredibly hot and sweaty um, and then we I can't remember if we did the move I don't think we even got to that move we did most of the fight there and then we pushed yeah we went on strike and then we came back in the middle of winter but they didn't have that location anymore so now they had trucked in hundreds of tons of that white clay to a back lot in Pinewood Studios um and so actually not in Parma, but in london yeah and so now the clay is on the ground but it's winter time and it's pouring with rain and the clay is just sloppy wet mess and so now i'm doing that running scene because i have wires on me to hold me up because it's physically impossible to run like that needed yeah. wires to assist me but i'm just like galloping through wet sloppy white mud clay mess and then they have to try and make it look like it was a dusty dry field from what we shot in the summertime And the other one is uh, the I think this this one is CGI the one that uh, you have the fight against all the Deadpool's and you finish this one with uh, Deadpool and Wolverine like jumping out of a bus and it's like a almost like a, a frame of a comic book with a two of you jump how was shooting that sequence? Yeah, that one may have been CG that jump out of the bus shot. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the angles of where he, uh, Wolverine's shoulders are; his arms are so far back that. I mean, I couldn't move my arms like that without the costume on, let alone with that suit on. The suit's incredibly restrictive. Like the chest piece and the back is all solid. So that was actually one of the hardest parts of that. And when we shot that sequence of fighting all the variants, when Hugh did his part, he almost had a panic attack because he couldn't get his breath back. You can't take a deep breath in that. Completely restricts your lung capacity. It's pretty scary. Um, so, yeah, that was a... It was definitely one of the harder sequences for Hugh to shoot. Personally, I like the van fight, the minivan. That one was yeah. different. I mean, the void's cool because they're just unleashing on each other, but the the restrictions of being in a confined space is what makes that more interesting to me. Um, yeah. I just like the dynamic of, yeah, like these two big guys, one with nine inch claws coming out of his hands and the other one trying to swing swords around inside the minivan. It was pretty cool. And then how the Deadpool gets kicked out, but then they jump back in instead of them both getting out of the van to attack each other, they keep kind of jump back in there. So that was, uh, that's probably my most fun sequence, but then also that void fight. I really like some of the moves that the fight choreo guys came up with like that. Yeah. That, the, quadruped run like you said and then straight from that into this like sliding back spin thing where i end up slicing the um deadpool's guns in half that move yeah. for me was probably my favorite move that was practical yeah. in the movie you were an x-man like you were the x-man the visual effects people still want stunt performers to do the work to do the stunts and then the visual effects will enhance it so i'm still i'm still getting employed i still get to do my job and have the fun part but you don't have to worry as much about hiding your face and if and you can hide mats in the ground and like sometimes if i was doing stunts and i'm 
sleeveless, I could still put elbow pads on for when I have to hit the ground and then visual effects can paint those out later. So it's, uh, I don't know, I think we're at a great time in a in like the collaboration between visual effects and stunts right now. I mean, it's well overdue. I don't understand why the Academy has ignored stunts for so long as an entire department. And it's not about the individual stunt person getting attention for their one particular stunt. It's more about the action design as an overall um, category. And it would be the stunt coordinator and second unit director that would be up for an award, not the actual stunt person. I know the Academy at one stage had said they're worried that stunt people are going to try and kill themselves to get an award, which is insanity because Nobody wants an award that bad. Um, yeah. But it wouldn't be about the individual anyway. It's about the stunt coordinator, just like any other department that gets the award. It's the head of the department that gets it. Um, and stunts, like as Fall Guy points out, I mean, there's been people trying to push for this award for like the last 20 years that it just keeps getting rejected. The Fall Guy has just kind of brought it a bit more to the foreground. Um, but I like their sequence where they point out like, Stunts has been in film from the start. It's been in, in film before sound has, and sound has two stunt has two award categories. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like the old Buster Keaton and stuff was all physical action. That's what movies are about, the motion picture. And the Academy is literally the Academy of Arts and Sciences. And I think stunts in particular encapsulates both art and science perfectly well into communicating what we're doing on camera.